Time now for Keller at Large. Here's John. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. You know, primary day here in Massachusetts, September 6th, is coming up on us fast, believe it or not. And if you take a Democratic ballot on that day, you Democrats and independent voters who are watching us, you will be offered three choices for lieutenant governor uh, to be the running mate with presumptive uh, gubernatorial nominee, Maura Healy. Today, we're talking with one of those LG candidates. Uh, she is Salem Mayor Kim Driscoll, a graduate of Salem State University and the Massachusetts School of Law who has served as Salem mayor since 2005. Mayor, welcome. Good to see you. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. So late last week, you released a video endorsing Maura Healey for governor. No big surprise. She's the only Democratic candidate remaining uh, since Senator Sonia Chang-Diaz uh, dropped out. Would you have done that endorsement if Chang-Diaz was still running? Yeah, I believe Morris done an excellent job in her role as AG. I'm certainly someone who encouraged her to run, excited about the opportunity to serve with her. And I think if you're running for lieutenant governor, you really want to have somebody who's strong and experienced in that role. And mostly I'm really concerned about turnout, that people are thinking that this race is over and aren't really recognizing the importance, now that we know the Supreme Court is pushing things down to the state level, that we have a solid team in place. Well, uh, there are two other candidates in this race, State Senator Eric Lesser um, and uh, Representative Tammy Gouveia. Uh, there are some primary voters, how many, I don't know, who vote strategically. They're looking to balance out the ticket, uh, the governor and lieutenant governor. Uh, how do you balance out a ticket with Healy better than those other two? You know, I think as someone who's been a mayor the last 16 years, prior to that working in the city of Chelsea as they came out of receivership, the thing I offer is real executive experience, know-how on the ground. When you're a mayor and you're in local office, I like to say we're part of the get stuff done wing. There's no hiding. You're making decisions every day. For neighbors and people you're going to see the next day, makes you a better listener, makes you more accountable. And I think it's that type of experience, frankly, that we need in the state house, especially given the fact that cities, the challenges we have, especially in a city like mine in Salem, are very much a microcosm of the challenges as we're seeing at the state, from housing, public education, infrastructure, climate crisis. Those aren't just abstract things to me. They're actually issues I've worked on, and I hope to be able to partner and use that experience to do good things for all of our communities. Well, you mentioned public education, and uh, I was just uh, reading up on you a little bit uh, back in 2016 when Question 2, the charter school expansion uh, petition, was on the ballot. Uh, you... Um, uh, kind of struck a middle ground there. You have several popular charter schools in Salem. Just, just one, actually. Oh, just one? Okay, I thought there were three. but Nope, nope just All right, one. just one yep. within the city limits. Yep. But uh, there are a lot of people on those waiting lists for those charter mm -hmm. schools. And uh, you spoke positively about charter schools. More Healy just recently was endorsed by the Mass Teachers Association, a bitter opponent of charter schools, and she supported, or she opposed the expansion back in 2016. How's that going to work? Are charter schools a good idea, and would you advocate for them as lieutenant governor? Yeah, I voted no on the cap for charter schools. They take money away from public education, so to be clear. Well, they are public schools. They are public schools, but they take education dollars away from those of us who are, I chair the school committee, who are working every day to serve all the kids. And I, Well, the, uh, the money follows the students, students who leave a conventional public school for what their families hope is a better opportunity. This funding follows them. But we know that when you're educating students, it, the number of students you have in the building doesn't change the amount of overhead you need with respect to the right. cost of running a building, operating a building. So it is a reduction. And while we do have a, a charter school in Salem that we have good relationships with, we've done planned professional development together. We don't have a hostile relationship. They're not breaking the law. It is not something that we were looking to expand in Salem and certainly not a question that I supported. We want to have innovation in our schools. In fact, we have three innovation schools in Salem. We've worked hard. There are pathways to address some of the things that people appreciate about charter schools, the flexibility, the nimbleness, the innovation, the opportunity to sort of think outside of the box, you can do that within a public school setting. And I know that because we've done it in my community. All right. On that note, let's take a quick break and we'll continue our conversation with Salem Mayor and candidate for Lieutenant Governor in the Democratic primary, Kim Driscoll, in a moment. Stay with us.